Hello, my name is Vidkentia Charles. I go to Haverford College and I will be a junior. Um, my project is on Dust Clean the Cosmic Microwave Background. So just a quick little introduction to cosmology, although my the previous members have kind of given us a little quick um, um, summary of it. I'll do it again. <laughs> um, so you guys may have heard of the Big Bang Theory. It explains the expansion of the universe. So pretty much the, um, the universe started formed out of singularity and then atoms started forming and then it, it cooled down for about 200,000 years. And after that, galaxies started forming and stars and the Earth as we know it today. Um, cosmologists, we know what happens like after the 200,000 years cooling. But we don't really know what happened before the 200,000 years cooling, like in the quick three minute expansion over here. So during the 300,000 years cooling, the cosmic microwave background was there through it all. The cosmic microwave background is also known as the CMB. So the cosmic microwave background is like the oldest life streaming through the universe. It's been there since the Big Bang. Um, and it's used as a fossil to us as to um, cosmologists. So we can learn more about what happened before um, the 200,000 years cooling and to also understand more about um, how the world began, which is the big question in cosmology. So what is dust? <laughs> so you guys have probably seen these pretty pictures. Um, you guys have probably seen them in like wallpapers, scientific fiction books, or like just anywhere like on Pinterest and online. They're really pretty, but we don't really want them. So there are dust and there are particles flowing around space. Um, so so this picture is the one that we, this is the picture of the CMB that we want to measure. And this picture right here is a picture of polarized dust. As you can see, it's like seems very blurry to us. So we would want to um, have a picture of the right CMB. So just so we can like have a clearer view and like to actually um, understand more and like use the CMB as a fossil, as I explained in the previous slides. So this is a picture of um, the thermal spectrum of the CMB. And so we want to use it in order to um, measure dust. For example, um, we in our data, we will be using it. We will be using um, maps at 353 frequency. And we already have the CMB signal. And we plan to like calculate it and get um, the dust signal. So we get our data from the Ag Telescope, which is, in, which is in Chile. And we also get our data from Planck Satellite. Um, now that we know where we get our data from, this is how we analyze them. So. I use the Pixel and HillPy packages. The Pixel package is um, we store the Act, the Act maps in, and the HillPy packages we store the Plank maps in, and then we we project the maps. Pretty much, we convert the Plank maps into the package that the Act map use, which is Pixel, in order to examine smaller patches of the sky, and then we trim down the maps, aphrodite them and we use Fourier transform in order to calculate the power spectrum. The power spectrum um, measures background noises and we use it in order to like see correlations between two different maps and we always use two different maps. Um, there's 
going to be two different power spectrum that we use is cost power spectrum and auto power spectrum. Cost power spectrum is when we use two different map is when we use two different map and the auto power spectrum is when we use one map. So I'm going to be showing you a few different like parts of um, our methods. So the first one is a power spectrum of two half two plank half mission maps at 353 gigahertz and one act map at 150 gigahertz. And then we appodize the maps, which is a picture of it. I'm sorry, I moved too fast. Which is a picture of like how the appodization looks like. And then we got the cost power spectrum and the auto power spectrum. Um, as you can see in, um, as you can see the, um, the plank, the plank, the colored line is the plank one and the black one is the CMB signal and the orange one is the act signal. So as you can see, the plank signal is um, higher than the act one and that is because at higher frequency, thus is much brighter. And then for the next one, um, we use a combined map. We use a combined map that is a plank and an act map. So it's truly one, but it's just a combination. And we trimmed it down into six different areas. We did this in order to avoid the Milky Way galaxy because it had extra emission that we wanted to avoid or that we didn't want to deal with. And this is just like, just um, a, an image of me actually like trimming them to six different areas and the one all the way to the right is just a combination of the full patches like that encompassed all the six areas. And as you can see for the auto power spectrum that we, co that we coded, the, um, most of the patches are isotropic. And then we pretty much kind of combine the first part and the second part together. We use a com the combination map of the plank and act map, and we use the two half mission plank maps at 253 gigahertz. And then we did the same thing. I trimmed them down into like six different patches, and then I did the full one that encompassed all of the six areas. And then we got a cost power spectrum. Um, as you can see, the, the higher power, again, is also due to the dust, is also due to the dust um, being higher at higher frequencies and dominating it. Um, so back to the same chart I showed you in the beginning. Um, so we used, so we have the CMB signal which is the black line. So we have the CMB signal, which is the black line right here. And the colored line is the frequency at 350 gigahertz. So. So the one that I just pointed just now was the frequency. And you can see like the, um, the blue, that's the CMB. So we have those two lines. So if we actually calculate them and subtract them, we would get a result of the thermal dust, which is the big red um, fat line that you see right there in the middle cross section of them. Um, yeah, um, that's how we get the dust. And when we get the dust, we can use it to remove the, um, to remove the dust and, and dust clean pretty much. So we plan to um, look at dust at a lower level at um, 143 gigahertz. Um, and we plan to like, we plan to um, 
cleaned them using the same methods that we use, either at one patch or six different patches. And then we um, want to accurately calculate the error bars precisely, which require a lot of simulations. And quick acknowledgments. Um, I want to acknowledge the Zion Foundation and SVP, my mentors, Steve Choi and Zachary Huber, as well as Casey, Casey, Saren, and Saran and Shannon for arranging all of this, um, as well as the Flatiron CCA. Um, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I, that says it all. Any questions? So <clears throat> you showed a couple of these power spectrum, you know, and there was the there was the line that you said that came from the CMB itself. So is that line itself is that a theoretical curve or is that a line that actually comes from some other data source? Um we get the CMB signal from so we get the CMB signal from but you said is it a can you repeat your question? Yeah, so the, the solid line itself, I just was wondering if that was just a theoretical expectation of how the CMB signal works, or if that was some other data from a different telescope. I would like to say, out of speculation, um, that we got the data from, that it's based on other data or empirical data, I would say, or probably our own maps, most likely. Okay. Yeah. Are there any questions in the room? Or how about if there's anybody on Zoom that has a question, you could unmute. Okay, yeah, you have a question? A question. Uh, I know that in the when you were like describing the way you were analyzing the data, you talk about apodization. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you can talk a little bit more about that because I've heard recently about apodization. So apodization is like we just use it to um, smooth out our maps in order to like put in the next um, line of code for Fourier transform. If you don't do this, Fourier transform is just going to spit out unreal numbers to us, pretty much. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's thank Wood Kenzie again.